Welcome back to LMU's Science Discovery Channel. Recently, we sent out your favorite Australian phylogenetic tree hunter, Steve Irwin, to LMU's campus to show you guys more about the fascinating phylums around campus. Steve, take it away. Good day there. It's your favorite phylogenetic tree hunter, Steve Irwin. We're at the bathroom at Rains Hall, and come look what we found. We have found a phylogenetic tree that was created by the very only John Mallet and his colleagues. It was created by analyzing the rRNA of 371 different animals. Nemurutia are estimated to have existed on Earth for 500 million years since the Cambrian period and have originated from the common ancestor of Mollusca. Alright, so we have just found a live Nemurutian in Rains Hall. Let's have a look. Be slow when approaching the creature. Alright, so this Nemurutia is most commonly known as a ribbon worm. Going to pick it up now. Oh crikey, she's a beauty. Well, not only is she bilateral in symmetry, but she is also most commonly found in the water. Sometimes found on land, but mostly in the water. Alright, so what do we know about Nemorotia? Of 1,275 species, the majority live in a marine environment. These acelomates are unsegmented and neither protosomes nor deuterosomes. And get this, they have more developed muscle than flatworms and can contract their bodies up to a tenth of the size. Ribbon worms repro reproduce sexually and some are hermaphrodites. You may be wondering how these rings come to be. Well, after fertilization, the egg is carried by the female. Until they hatch, there's actually a swimming larvae stage called the fidelum before the adult phase. Now you may be wondering how they eat and what they eat. I'll tell you, they actually eat other worms but also mollusks and crustaceans. Ribbon worms have specialized structures called the proboscis. It's stored in the body, and when it's activated, it's forced out of the body by hydrostatic pressure, then wraps around its prey. It's often venomous. This proboscis also has structures on it called rhabdites, which are spines used to inject venom into its prey. Awesome, right? There are four main groups in Nemeratia. Both Antilopa and Elopa live in freshwater environments and are hermaphroditic. Heteronemeratia and Paleonemeratia live in saltwater environments. Heteronemeratia contain the largest species of Nemeratia, and Paleonemeratia are the most primitive Nemeratia. Good day. I've just found yet another phylogenetic tree. Let's check it out. Let's go, shall we? Oh! Alright, let's take a look, shall we? Oh, she's a beauty. This is a phylogenetic tree constructed from 16 sRNA sequences. In this tree, the closest relatives to Nemeratia is Anthropodia and Mollusca. Good evening. It's your favorite phylogenetic tree hunter, Steve Owen. The sun has just gone down on LMU campus and we are now night hunting for our last phylogenetic tree. It has just been found. Come take a look. Oh, and she's a beauty, isn't she? She is built purely off of observed traits, with Nemeratia's closest relative being Analytia. The observed data matrix is different from the phylogenetic tree constructed based off of the 16S rRNA in John Mallet, Catherine Wagoner, and Matthew Yoder's rRNA phylogenetic trees in two ways. The first is that the tree constructed from the observed characteristics groups Mollusca and Cordata, while neither of the rRNA phylogenetic trees do. This is most likely due to the shared derived trait of gills in a closed circulatory system listed in the data matrix. The second is that the tree constructed from the observed characteristic groups annelids, anthropods, and kinoderms together, while neither of the rRNA phylogenetic trees do. This is most likely due to the fact that they are all segmented. 
adding additional categories such as reproduction and habitat, and adding additional category options such as the nerve ring of echinoderms and the nerve net of cnidarians, may have led to the construction of an inaccurate phylogenetic tree.